Do you notice blood in the sink when you spit after brushing or flossing? Well, whether it's a little or a lot, it must not be ignored and I'm gonna tell you why. Plus, top tips on how to fix it. Almost all adults experience bleeding gums at some point in their lives, so most of us have come to accept it as being normal, but it's not normal. Honestly, I'm so frequently with patients and I say to them, oh, are you having any trouble with your teeth or gums at all? And they're like, no, nothing, everything's fine. Great, do your gums bleed at all? Oh yeah, all the time. Okay, that's not normal. That would count as a problem with your gums. <laughs> if your arm bled every time you touched it or every time you washed it, you would definitely see a doctor about that. That's not something you would ignore. And this is the same deal, but I don't want you to panic. Bleeding gums is something we can deal with. It doesn't need to be serious as long as you get on it right away. There are really three main causes of bleeding gums. Uh, the first would be trauma. Uh, the second, the most common cause is gum disease. And the third would be health conditions, um, including medications. So trauma is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically when you've done yourself an injury, when you're brushing your teeth. So if you've snapped your floss down a bit too hard and nicked your gum maybe, or if you're using a new head on your toothbrush, which you should be doing every three months, by the way, um, and the bristles are a bit hard still and you're brushing a bit too hard, you might you know, graze your gums and that would cause some bleeding. The way you'll know that this is the cause of that bleeding is, well, first of all, you'd probably notice the pain when you create the injury. You may be able to see a little nick in your gum or a graze on your gums. Also, it'll be a one-off bleed, so it, they won't bleed every day. Um, if you were to do the injury tonight, for example, by tomorrow morning when you brush, if, as long as you don't repeat your injury, your gum shouldn't bleed. So you'll know that that was, that was a one-off and you'd know to be a little less heavy-handed next time. So the second cause, most common cause of bleeding gums is gum disease, otherwise known as gingivitis in its early stage. As gum disease progresses, it gets new names. So gum disease is caused by plaque bacteria. As soon as we finish brushing, plaque starts to build on our teeth again. When we're breathing in, when we're talking, when we're eating, when we're drinking, bacteria is sticking to a clear film on our teeth and building up that creamy white substance that we know as plaque. Plaque contains bacteria, and so if it's allowed to linger on your gums for too long, our body responds with an immune response. So it rushes antibodies to your gums to protect your body from that bacteria. And the uh, symptoms of this include bleeding gums, maybe some swelling, also a bit of soreness possibly when you're flossing or when you're brushing. If you're only getting bleeding in a specific area, so not everywhere, just like maybe just here or just there, and it, you don't usually get it, but oh, I just noticed they're bleeding today. The chances are you may have missed a bit when you were last brushing. So when you brush this morning, maybe you're in a bit of a hurry, maybe the kids are wrapped around your legs, if you've got children like mine, and you know, you didn't brush as well as you usually do. And so a bit of plaque has been left in this area. All day, your body has had a chance to respond to that plaque being there. And so when you then brush tonight, you brush your teeth and that area bleeds because there's antibodies there that are protecting your gums. If you notice this, the key thing is to brush that area really well. Okay, so going back to my earlier analogy of the arm that's bleeding, I know that if we had a bleeding arm, we wouldn't keep touching it <laughs> knowing that it's bleeding. Unfortunately, with our gums, it's kind of the reverse. So. If an area bleeds, we need to brush it more. We need to stimulate it more. The complete opposite of if anything else bled. So you need to keep that area as clean as you possibly can because you know you missed it last time. As long as you do that, in the next couple of days, that area will be fit as a fiddle again and everything will be fine. If, however, you notice that areas, specific areas are bleeding constantly every day, no matter how well you're cleaning it, they're always bleeding, or if you know your whole mouth seems to be bleeding, you know, it's not specific areas. It could be that some of that plaque has been there for a long time and has had a chance to harden. When plaque hardens, we call it tartar or calculus, same thing. And you can't remove that at home. A toothbrush and floss is not gonna get that off. You're gonna need yourself a happy hygienist <laughs> or a lovely dentist um, to take that off for you. And once that's gone and you've had you know, a good professional clean, all that tartar's gone, if you resume really good oral health hygiene habits at home, you'll be absolutely fine. Your gums will restore back to health because they will stop with the immune response. If you ignore the first stages of gum disease, it can progress, okay? So while gum disease starts off as gingivitis, which is just, you know, bleeding, swelling of the gums that we can totally reverse with good oral hygiene. If you ignore that, 
it then progresses into something more dangerous called periodontal disease or periodontitis. This is when the bacteria gets itself below your gum line. So instead of just attacking the gums, it's now able to attack the bone that's holding your teeth in place. If it does this, your teeth are going to get loose and they could even fall out if they're left you know, if it's left untreated for long enough. There is treatment available for this, so please don't be scared. Um, but you do need to see a dentist and a happy hygienist for that treatment. What it would include is a deep clean or maybe a fine scale, you may have heard that, in which we're gonna numb you up so you don't feel a thing, you can just have a little snooze and we're gonna get under the gums and remove that bacteria that's aggravating your teeth, your gums, your bone. And so you've got a lovely blank canvas again and then when you go home and you have exemplary or hygiene habit, you know, you will be absolutely fine. But please don't let it get to that point because any damage that's done to your bones is not reversible. Okay, we can stop it getting worse, but we cannot replace, at the moment, we cannot replace that bone. So please be aware of that. So the third cause of bleeding gums was uh, health conditions and medications. Some health conditions such as diabetes, vitamin C deficiency, vitamin K deficiency, these can all cause bleeding gums or make you more susceptible to bleeding gums. Also pregnancy, the hormonal changes during pregnancy can cause your gums to bleed. I think my nan used to say that um, in her generation you'd lose a tooth for every child you had. That's not the case anymore. We take much better care of you than that now. But that's what they used to say. So pregnancy, you know, pregnant women need to take extra special care of your teeth and gums while you're pregnant. And also some medications, particularly like blood thinning medications, such as warfarin or aspirin, they can make you more susceptible to bleeding. So if you're practicing exemplary or hygiene habits at home, you've seen a dentist and they've told you that your teeth are spotless and absolutely fine and you don't have any gum disease, but you're still noticing bleeding, it might be worth popping in to see your GP, maybe to switch up some medication or just to check that you don't have any health conditions that could be affecting your gums. If you are a smoker, you may not notice any bleeding even if you have gum disease. This is because smoking acts as a vasoconstrictor, so it like restricts your blood vessels, making it harder for them to bleed. Well, this is also one of the reasons why smokers are at higher risk of tooth loss, because it can go on for longer without them noticing that there's a problem. And by the time we get there, you know, you're already in the later stages of gum disease and teeth are falling out. So if you are a smoker, I recommend keeping up your regular dental checkups so that your dentist can keep a close eye on those gums and make sure nothing's going on. Things you can do if your gums are bleeding, reduce your pressure when you're brushing, make sure you're not brushing too hard, make sure you're not causing trauma, up your daily hygiene game. So make sure you are brushing, make sure you are flossing, make sure you're doing everything as best you can. Um, I have a video on how to brush and floss properly, so check that out. Just know, please, that brushing alone is not enough, okay? If you are not using anything in between your teeth, you're likely to suffer with, with gum problems because there will always be that plaque hiding in between your teeth. So please know this, brushing is not enough. If you have bleeding gums, that is not a one-off from trauma, you need to see a dentist. Okay, the dentist will examine your gums, see what stage you're at in gum disease, if it's just a specific area, if it's everywhere. They will bespoke an oral hygiene plan to you, to your needs, let you know exactly what you need to use and where you need to use it. And either your dentist or your hygienist will do a professional clean for you and remove every little bit of plaque and tartar. So you've got a lovely blank canvas to work with, which is gonna make your life so much easier at home. And then you're ready to fight your way back to gum health. If after doing all of that, your gums are still bleeding, pop in and see your GP, just to make sure nothing else is going on. Or if you even, if you already know that you have, you know, a vitamin deficiency, if you're pregnant, if you have diabetes, or if you're on a certain medication, there might be a way that the GP can help you, you know, improving your oral health as well. There are some mouthwashes on the market that are specifically for bleeding gums. I would recommend only using medicated mouthwashes under the recommendation of your dentist. The reason for this is that some of you just won't need them. Um, they are not magic. They will not work on their own. If you're practicing poor oral hygiene, but using a mouthwash for bleeding gums, your gums will still bleed. <laughs> um, you'll just be paying out lots of money for a medicated mouthwash for nothing and literally spitting your money down the drain. Also, many of these mouthwashes, they contain an ingredient called chlorhexidine, um, which is wonderful at fighting off bad bacteria but it's also really good at staining your teeth <laughs> um, because the way that chlorhexidine works is that it grabs on essentially to the bad bacteria in your plaque, um, but it also grabs on to the color in 
anything you eat or drink. <laughs> so you end up, I mean, I've seen people that have been using a chlorhexidine mouthwash for a full six months and they come in and they're like, oh, I've been really good. I've been using this special mouthwash and they open their mouth and they've got black stains all over their teeth. And I'm like, oh Lord, help me. It's so hard to get off. It does come off, but it's so hard. I would recommend only using medicated mouthwashes under the instruction of your dentist or hygienist. Otherwise, just stick to a fluoride mouthwash and brush and floss as best you can. So to sum up, bleeding gums are not normal. Please don't ignore them. Healthy gums shouldn't bleed. There are three main causes of bleeding gums. So trauma, gum disease, the most common cause, and uh, health conditions or medications. Please see your dentist if your gums are bleeding so that we can examine you, give you a tailor-made or hygiene program and a really good professional clean. Practicing good oral hygiene at home is your best defense against gum disease and bleeding gums. If you're a smoker, it's a good idea to have more regular checkups and cleans to help you to stave away gum disease as you are at higher risk. See your GP regarding bleeding gums if necessary. Brushing is not enough. Do not waste your money on uh, magic mouthwashes unless told so to do so by your dentist. And until I see you next time, keep smiling.